This video is brought to you by Devout Decals, makers of reusable Catholic art for your home altar, your bedroom, and your home classroom. It should probably not be surprising at this point that the forces of wickedness that occupy the highest offices in the church have emerged in the past few days to defend Cardinal Reinhard Marx's now infamous statement that the church has been wrong about that topic that uh, Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church is so entrenched in, and that the church must change its teaching. There's been a series of defenses of Pastor Jimmy's style behavior in the church in the past few days, and it points to something insidious in the Church of Christ, that the sins that cry out to heaven for justice have already been accepted by quite a few of the bishops and priests of the world. And the man whom the world sees as Pope sits by and does nothing to correct this. The time has long since come for the laity to speak the truth and to implore our blessed Lord to free the church from the shackles of this Gomorrah-style servitude. So let's get into these stories about Cardinal Marx being treated as a visionary by his peers who share his and probably other illicit tastes. Let's start by revisiting a topic I covered at the beginning of Lent. A bishop in Germany hung a piece of what he is calling sacred art above the tabernacle in his cathedral in Innsbruck, Germany. To cath.net we go for an unfortunate update to the story. Headline, Innsbruck Bishop Glettler defends his controversial altarpiece with a half-naked man. Again, this image is supposed to be sacred art. Supposed to be. Sacred to whom, you might ask. Certainly not to Catholics. This story caused a stir when I reported it at the start of Lent. And here we are now dealing with the fact that the bishop is not remorseful in the slightest about this. From the article, quote, The Innsbruck diocesan bishop Hermann Glettler has defended his controversial altarpiece in the Innsbruck University Church of St. John to an unofficial medium from the German Bishops' Conference. The image, tired, a female artist, depicts a shirtless man on a striped sheet. Glettler sees the cloth in the tradition of the medieval Lenten cloths. In recent years, the Bishop of Innsbruck has repeatedly disturbed believers with strange quote-unquote art campaigns. A few years ago, the man from Innsbruck brought a crucifix with a crucified frog from an artist. He was, an allow he was then allowed to live with him in the church for 40 days. Afterwards, the artist celebrated a resurrection performance in which he rubbed himself with the male physical contribution to bringing life into the world, and mostly, quote, I think you may understand why I swapped a word out there at the end, because it was just nasty. Not only is this a sort of worldliness on full display, this is a demonic style of worldliness, using images that evoke the impure and grotesque to allegedly signify and represent holy things during one of the holiest times of year. I have no doubt that the bishop in that story is so completely twisted in his understanding that he truly believes that such an image is a contemporary twist on the sacred. What it invokes in typical Catholics is more telling, a natural repulsion that we would expect for anyone with a functioning sense of the faith, a sensus catholicus. And therein lies the problem. Any bishop or cleric who has no issues with that imagery has likely some deep-seated issues that they themselves need to address that in better times would have barred them from ever being ordained but in our times probably spend their careers alone. The case that has captured the Catholic attention this past week has been Cardinal Reinhard Marx, who said that what you probably already know by now, that he believes that the church got it wrong on the pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit church issue, and that the church needs to change. Doing so is a categorical rejection of the faith, for the church will surrender all claims to infallibility and inerrancy by changing something as fundamental as the moral code of the church, if it, this should happen. The Catholic world was largely repulsed by Cardinal Marx's words, which is why it was only natural for Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church to come to his aid. From complicit clergy, we get this story. Modified headline, again, for good reasons. Father James Martin rushes to defend expletive deleted heresy of Cardinal Marx. And come to his defense, did he? Pastor Jimmy not only does advisory work in the Roman Curia for Vatican Communications, he is the editor-in-chief of America Magazine, which is the leading Jesuit publication in the U.S., and by extension, in most of the world. And boy, did he defend Cardinal Marx. Quote, Pro-Jimmy Martin activities, Jes Jesuit father James Martin rushed to defense of German Cardinal Reinhard Marx Saturday after the latter proposed changing Catholic teaching on the morality of G certain Jimmy Martin acts. After Bishop Joseph Strickland of Tyler, Texas, admonished Cardinal Marx, calling for his resignation, Father Martin suggested that Cardinal Marx had not contradicted Catholic belief in any significant way. Bishop Strickland of Tyler, Texas, says 
that Cardinal Reinhard Marx, former chairman of the German Bishops' Conference, has left the Catholic faith, not for denying the Trinity or Incarnation, but for saying that the church needs to rethink its position on the Pastor Jimmy Martin topic, Father Martin declared on Twitter Saturday morning. In his statement, Father Martin seems to imply that only a rejection of established Catholic teaching on doctrinal matters and not morals constitutes a serious departure from Catholic teaching. Cardinal Marx's proposal that the church can simply reverse its millennial biblically-based teachings on the immorality of the Jimmy Martin topic is, however, a bridge too far, as a helpful April 1st explainer in the pillar points out. With the context of the cardinal's remarks, his hopes to see the church effectively upend its entire understanding of the marital act, natural law, and revealed divine truth in the scriptures, the wording might change, but the doctrinal church of the teaching cannot reverse itself, the pillar declares, in reference to the cardinal's proposal to change the catechism of the Catholic Church, end quote. And the proposal to change the catechism of the Catholic Church is a proposal to change it to be in keeping with the ever-shifting values of the world. Pastor Jimmy has an enormous amount of influence and reach in the Catholic world, far more so than his Twitter reach would suggest. When he speaks, many lukewarm Catholics listen. I've met otherwise good practicing Catholics who think Pastor Jimmy is a stand-up guy, an Orthodox priest who teaches a faith with only a little bit of personal embellishment. Meanwhile, while all this is happening, while the Bishop of Innsbruck defends his bizarre artwork, and while Pastor Jimmy uses his rather huge influence to counter-signal counter Catholic orthodoxy, Francis, the one man on earth who could unilaterally do something about this, does nothing. And why? Because he endorsed the German Synodal Project several months ago, and what Cardinal Marx expressed that has caused such a stir is at the very center of the German Synodal Project, at the very center of it. That's why Francis has said nothing, because he either agrees with him or is using Cardinal Marx to make himself look like a moderate when he publishes his inevitable radical document at the end of the Synod in fall of 2023. It's been his modus operandi going back at least to the Synod on the Family, which produced Amoris Laetitia in a very similar way, if not further back than that. What this really is about is secularizing the church. The goal is clearly to fully turn the church into a feel-good social club meets NGO. Material works and group hugs are the new gospel, this springtime of the Church of the New Advent. And what makes this all the more maddening is that there are people who clearly hunger for Christ despite being atheists who are begging the church to get its act together. Like this young man who gave a public lecture at a German synodal meeting calling the church out for secularizing. And he nails the consequences of this. A loss of souls. From Cath.net headline, a compulsively contemporary church does not appeal to me. The compulsory contemporary church is a good way to describe things now. The synod on synodality and all its silliness and heresy is centered on bringing the church up to date with the modern world. That was the explicit goal of Vatican II. And now we get this de facto third Vatican Council by synod now, whose goal is to further secularize the church, to further empty of, it, of its div divinity by embracing sin and apathy. And this young man's lecture calls the church out for this. The summary from Cath.net reads as follows and is short, quote, a compulsively contemporary church does not appeal to me. The journalist, Alexander Krex, emphasized this in a lecture before the Bavarian State Synod. Krex, who, according to his own statements, does not believe in God, spoke in the lecture in Geiselwind on the subject, why is nobody proselytizing on me? This is reportedly by idea. If the church does not believe in its radiance, who else should? According to the journalist, people are looking for answers to existential questions. So Christians should be able to provide information about God, faith, and prayer, as well as their everyday Christianity. This also applies to the question of why an almighty God allows the bad in the world. The answer should be obvious to someone who, like me, is not Bible literate. Missionary efforts should not be intrusive, but they should involve the right word at the right time. The language does not necessarily have to be the same as that used in children's series on Netflix because it turns biblical stories into banal tales. Church language could also be old-fashioned, end quote. There it is again, old-fashioned, meaning that young man has a hunger for the good, the true, and the beautiful, and, dare I say, the traditional and rigid. A hierarchy of the church aren't interested in listening and providing those things. Instead, they want to provide all the things to those who have embraced one of a short list of sins that cry out to heaven for vengeance. It's diabolical, and it is why I say, please pray for these bishops, not for their intentions, which are clearly wicked, but for their interior conversion. It is a great act of charity when you do that as well as pray for any hardness in your heart and in mine to be fixed by heavenly grace. Since we all need special graces in these times to cling rigidly to the faith that was deemed to be true by the church going back to antiquity, especially me. 
All right, so I am curious about what you think of all of this. Why are the modernists scrambling to defend their grotesque statements and actions? Is it because they think they can convince most of the laity that such artwork and statements are A-OK, that they're just fine with our faith? Or are they just playing defense because they feel mounting pressure? Well, let me know in the comments, please, and like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. You can find all of today's sources in my show notes at returntotradition.org. That's the name of this podcast with a .org at the end. Look for today's episode title for a post, and you'll find my sources there. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.